and welcome to Smiles Fam. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I've just, uh, changed into a new camera tonight. Um, it's my Nikon. So uh, yeah, today um, we're going to be looking at the motor holder. So that's the last part of the Smiles robot, um, which is the the wheeled version, which I've holding here. Um, so the the motor holder is these two sections that are in here that hold the motor in place, uh, stop it sliding out, and. Um, that's what we're going to be uh, modeling today. Uh, as you know, Smiles is a, an amazing low cost open source 3D printable robot. It's very easy to print yourself, very easy to assemble, uh, very little electronics or programming skills required. So it's ideal for STEM education and hobbyists alike. So let's get over to, let's go over to Fusion. Right, so. Here we go. Let's get started. So, as usual, what I'm going to do is look on the Smiles Fan website. I'm going to open up the Design Studio. I'm going to go over to the Multi Holder, and you can see there we've got things like the PDF, which has got all the profile things on that we need, and we've also got all the the dimensions and all the step by step um, basics of the sketch. That pop up. Um, which is on the website, um, messages me directly. So if anybody's got any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to pop them on there as well. We've also got the live chat as well over on uh, on YouTube. So feel free to say hi and uh, ask any questions there. So hi to Tom, hi to Nadia Tech, hi to Honda 400F Honda. <laughs> hi everyone. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this off to the side and I'm gonna use this as um, the basis of the the work we're doing tonight. So let us just move the wrong window there. Let's just move Fusion back. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is save the file. So I'm going to save the file as let's just find the right location. So this is going to be in the live stream. I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call this one motor holder. Okay, and the file is going to be motor holder. Great, okay, so the first thing we want to do, make sure we've got our grid switched on so we can see that. And let's start on the top. Let's create a new sketch. And what I will do is I'll create a rectangle. We'll create a, a line by hitting L and X for construction. We'll find that midpoint, which is a little triangle there. And we'll just align that um, on the bottom there. What we'll then do is, uh, I just noticed I've not got my little, little me in the window there. So let me just uh, move that across there. Just bear with me a second. I think I just need to reconnect my camera. There we go. Hi. <laughs> Just noticed that you couldn't see me there. Okay, so let us oops, carry on with this. So what I want to do is just align this point here with the midpoint. So I could do that using a coincident constraint. There we go. And we want to start dimensioning out this rectangle because the motor holder is essentially just a rectangle with some holes cut out of it. Again, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I've got a slightly different window there you can see. A uh, bit better in colour. So those two yellow areas, they're the uh, the things that will be modelling one of them. We just print two out. Okay, back to Fusion. So D for dimension. I'm going to dimension this top one, which is 53.4, and the side dimension is 19.5. 19.5. You might remember when we was doing the the chassis design, um, the holes that are actually the, the cut out in the the side, um, where these actually slide into. If I can sort of point there on on the side wall, I think they are actually 20. So 19.5 just gives us a little bit of play on there, so that we've got some tolerance. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit more on that. Okay, so let's move them in a bit so we can zoom in. Okay, so essentially we want another three rectangles somewhere in here. 
let's just do that and then let's start dimensioning them and I just undo those three and make sure the construction is not selected while we draw them it's just quicker to do that okay it doesn't matter what shape they are at the moment we can dimension them out to be correct so D for dimension so this four, this first one is 14 millimeters across and it's three millimeters from the edge so let's just do that to three millimeters there okay and it's also three millimeters all the way around so there's kind of a three millimeter top and bottom gap okay so that's the first one this second one on the right hand side essentially mirrors this so what we can then do is just do some equals constraints so that equals that the height equals that and then the position between the edge we will just have to set there as being three and it still thinks that there still got some blue lines there so why is that so it's the up and down so what we can do there is just do a, a collinear constraint on the top line so we do that that edge through that edge collinear that edge to that edge there and then that edge to that edge there perfect okay and similar with that can be collinear to that that can be collinear to that and then the dimension of the middle one is slightly different that is 15 so then we have a gap between the two and that is 2.2 there we go um, next there is a small um, fillet on the edges of all these so if I just click on there it's actually two millim sorry one millimeter let's try that again one millimeter and that's the same for that one, that one, that one. Let's do all of these. Okay. Like that. Okay. So let's just check that we've not ruined any of our constraints. So why is it complaining about that? Right, so we just need to make them, them to collinear with each other, but that one needs to be colony with that one there perfect and that one's still blue so let's have a look what's going on there and it's just because we haven't set the distance between them which is 2.2 .2. so let's just do that 2.2 .2. everything's black that means everything's fully constrained okay let's have a look what's next so there's also another rectangle um, which follows very closely the bottom of that and that'll become clear in a moment what that is so I'll just do that to there and then we can just dimension that out so that that line there is collinear with this edge so let's make that collinear with that edge there and that is collinear with the edge there perfect and then the height of this is three so height of that is three is that right? No, sorry, it's 2.5. 2.5. Perfect. And then according to the design, we've also got a little line here which goes from here to here and from here to here. Okay, that is the first sketch done. Okay, so let's have a look. What we do next is just um, extend this out by the depth. So just check that's 2.2 .2. so what we'll do there is just grab this profile and that bit and extend that out to 2.2 .2 in height there we go so now um, if you look at the um, the way that the motor holder um, goes into the side of these little slots um, it's actually not completely flat it's not it's, it's actually got some little um, cutouts on it some chamfers so this edge here and this edge here have a very slight chamfer to them it's not 45 degrees so we can't use the chamfer tool so we'll just have to create a small profile on the side on the front face um, and then cut that out okay so let's zoom in so let's just uh, look to see what we have there so the, the very top 
of this triangle that we're going to create is just one millimeter so we just need to sketch out a quick rough triangle and then let's just constrain that so that should be horizontal that should be vertical and then the dimension of this is just one millimeter um, so now we can just um, make these collinear or coincident let's go for collinear for the top line with that line there that should be collinear with that line there and then that bottom edge just needs to click it into place so that's what we need to do just on the other side as well so let's just zoom out and zoom back in on the other side okay let's create another triangle let's quickly make all these things constrained and that top line needs to be one millimeter so now we just need to add our constraints for the parts of the triangle so that's that edge there the top is that edge there and then that very bottom point is just coincident with that bottom corner okay that's all we need to do um, for that sketch so now we just need to select them by pressing Q for push pull selecting the profiles so let's do that okay and then let's just cut that through so that's all the way through just trying to zoom out a bit there we go so we can see it okay so now when we look at it we've got that kind of trapezium shape trapezoid okay so next up we are going to extend the sort of tower area here so what happens with the uh, the motor holders again if I just flick back to full screen for a second so if you look on inside here there's two little sort of tower areas that are extruded up from the flat base and they grip the battery when the battery is sort of between the two areas here um, so that's what we're going to create it's quite a complicated shape to make so there's a few extra steps to it um, the first one is to make this sort of tower area that towers out of here so what we're going to do is we're going to switch the sketch on the very base sketch that we created we can actually rename these as well just to help us along instead of sketch one and sketch two so I might call those uh, side cutouts okay and you can actually group these as well if you wanted to group those two together there to say that that was um, the base or something like that uh, and them two to do with the side cut out and then you can expand and contract them as well on the timeline um, can't, I'll just move up the, uh, the window there so you can see just need to move up a little bit more so you can see what's going on there so on the timeline I was just uh, grouping those two together and you group them just by selecting the two, right clicking and and selecting create group. I'll just move that down so we've got a bit more working space. Okay, so now that we've got that enabled then, this, this part of the area underneath, let's just turn off the body for a second. This area here is the bit that we want to extrude out. So let me just look back on our sketch. Okay. want to see I think there's a missing area there so yes there is so back on our original base sketch um, there was a horizontal line that I forgot to add from the very middle point to the middle point let's just add that back in there let's just turn off some of these constraints and dimensions and points so that we can see what we're doing a bit easier okay so that line actually needs to be a construction line so X for construction and then what we're going to do here is and the reason I couldn't see it on the uh, on this diagram I'm just looking at here these little areas here just need to be drawn in so just missing those off from the sketch so L and we just want to draw from that point to that point and from that point to that point there okay and I'm just gonna hit save okay finish the sketch and now now that we've got that we can extrude them out so let's just go back to our home view that's more like it now so if I press Q now I can select that profile completely so 
that's what I'm going to do there. Now I think when I drew those lines out before there is another tiny line there because I don't want this middle bit here. So let's just go back again. This is the great thing about Fusion, you can just go backwards and forwards in the timeline, um, add in extra bits uh, and then go back. There we go. So that will now enable us to extrude out the profile that we're looking for. Okay, so Q to push pull. That's much more like it. There we go. And we're just going to create this sort of tower area. So we just need to switch on the body so we can see that. And that's going to be extruded up. Um, I think it's 9.3. Oops, I did a cut instead of a join then. Let me just go back and change that to a join. There we go. Okay. So that's coming along. Now on the, the actual... Oops. On the actual smart, let me just go full screen again. Um, you can see that maybe it's easier to see on this one here. It's actually a 45 degree angle this area here, so it's not um, quite as rectangular as we have currently on the screen. So what we need to do is apply um, a chamfer to these two points. So let's go to chamfer. Let's push that in so that we get to 7.1 I think it might be there we go so that's now nice and uh, angular at a 45 degree angle and what we need to do now is create a sketch on this side this is a sort of an interesting shape but we'll also do, actually um, which side should we do that on that's fine I think that side there yeah this is an external facing sketch so Let's bring in, project in the, uh, the body, just so we've got that outline there. And let's start creating this shape. So I'm just going to rough out what it looks like. There's a kind of a flat area. Then there is um, a circle, so C for circle. And then there is another sort of circle or arc. So we can do this a number of ways. We can either draw it as a, a circle from a point um, or we can actually use the arc tool. So let's use the arc tool. I don't think we've used that one much recently. So let's get rid of that one there. We'll keep the circle because we want that. And the circle is, let's have a look. Actually, it's not a circle. It's a flat area, which we then apply um, a fillet to. So it's not quite um, what I thought it was there. Right, so that's that's the shape there. What I need to do is just uh, make that point coincident with that point. We need to say that from this point here to this point here is 5mm and this is 1.5mm and then this kind of this is going to be like an S shape. So I'll just show you the profile that we're going for here. So there's a flat bit, there's a rounded area, and you can see those two points there. That's actually because the, there's a fillet applied, and there's a tiny little flat section there. Um, and then there's an arc which curves around here. So what we need to do is dimension out this point here. Um, we can do this a number of ways. One of the reasons I was going to use the circle is because we can create a circle, and we can just make it tangential to this edge here and to that point there. And then we don't even need to specify what this, this point is here. It'll calculate that for us. Uh, and we can see there the, the radius of these two fillets is 0 0.85. So what we can do, um, we can we can draw that circle back in. So let's see for circle. Going backwards and forwards a few times here. There's a few different ways to, uh, to do these things. I always like um, designing things in Fusion 360 because it's... Um, it's a bit of an intellectual challenge figuring out how, based on a drawing, how we can create something or based on some measurements, if you've got a part and you think, you know, how do I go about creating this part? Um, you have to sort of go back and think, what, what are the primitives? What are the basic shapes that make this up? Uh, and then how, using these constraints, can we create that shape? So what I was saying there is we want to make this tangential to that point there. That's gone on the wrong side, really. So let's undo that step. It's not what I wanted it to do. I want it to be. So I'm going to have to create a flat. So 
if I create a line that goes out from there and I make that a construction line I can make this tangential to that construction line and then it behaves correctly and I can make this um, tangential to that there and then we've got that arc that we're looking for so what I think we need to do though is just bring that line I'm not convinced that that is the right point for it to become tangential which is just here um, because when we apply this fillet it's going to be about here where it needs to be tangential to but we can delete constraints so let's leave it there for a second and then let's apply our fillets first so we can click on that point there I think what we'll need to do is actually make this more rectangular like that and then we can apply using the fillet tool the fillet that we're after so it's that point there and we said the fillet was 0 0.85 there we go so you can see now although that line is tangential there and it's it's finding that um, the problem is is that that point there doesn't match that point there we need it to be that area there so what we can do we can click on that constraint we can click delete to get rid of it get rid of that line for a second and then what we can do is just do a coincident constraint between that and that point there there we go so it's going to bend round and then come round here like that still not sure I'm happy about that that's because that's that's no longer fixed so we just need to do the dimension between that and that which we said was 1.5 okay so what do we do about that so I think what we did last time I'm going to just delete this circle for a second I'm going to drop a line down from here I'm going to make that a construction line There's a funny artifact happening there and I think what's happened is that radius of 8.5 is overlapping and we didn't have that problem on the other one I'm just wondering why that's occurred so I'm just checking out the uh, constraints that we've got in place there so we have got a line going across the top there Okay, so can we change that? Okay, I think I'm going to just delete that for a second, delete that for a second, delete that. And let's just extend that out again. Let's just make that rectangle back up. Okay, so so that needs to be vertical. That needs to be coincident with that bottom point there. That's going to be where we draw our circle from. In fact, we can drop that in now, actually. We can draw our circle there. And we can make that edge tangential to that edge there. And we can make that coincident to... It's not going to be that point. That's why I'm hes hesitating off drawing that there. So let's just leave that for a second. And let's just look at what's going on here. I did practice this earlier today, so I shouldn't really be struggling on this. Let's just create that point there. So it's 0 0.85. So is that is that correct? Are they both 0 0.85? That looks more than the midpoint. It just needs to be enough that um, it should be 0 0.75 really. That's half of um, 1.5. Thinking about the maths behind that, let's do that. So that is also going to be 
0.75. That's more like it. Okay. Okay, so now, now that we have a point here where this is this circle is coming round to, we can make this circle coincident with that point there. Like that. So now if I use the scissors, the trim tool, we can get rid of anything that we don't want, like that bit there and then the rest of the circle. And then what I can do, I can create that bit that's sticking out the edge there, I can just make that into a construction line by hitting X. Making that there. This is still showing as blue, so it's not quite locked into place. So let's see what's going on there. And that's because that is not being locked into place because we haven't specified, we've lost that dimension of the five millimeters which is edge to edge. So let's just create another line which is the uh, the outside line there. Let's just drop a line down, let's hit select and then X. Let's make that tangential to the outside of there. And now what we can do is use that as a basis to do our measurement from there to there. That's five. And that should make that locked into place. So we don't actually need that, that little line there, but we do need this line here to be black. So let's just see why that's not quite locked into place. That's interesting. So let's lock that to... Do we actually need them? I don't think we need them now, so... So that's fine. So we just need that to be locked into place. And we can do that by just dropping that line down again from there as a construction line, making sure it's definitely vertical and then making sure that it's locked to that point there. So, and then what it's saying then is, I don't know how far down to go. What we want to do is just drop that line down there and then lock the center point to that all. We can do that just by clicking the constraint, coincident, and that line there. Okay, now it's turned black. So now we've got the shape that we're after. And what that means now, we can finish that sketch. Whew, that was tough. We can now select the profile, press Q for push-pull, select the profile, we want to extrude it all the way back to this side face here. So we can go to object, we can select that side face, click OK, we're on join. And we've now got that area that will hug the battery. So we just turn off our sketches so we can see that a bit better. You can see now how in profile that's going to hug the battery, which is going to sit down here. And at the end of this session, what I intend to do is, is is assemble together all the different parts that we built so far in Fusion and create a full 3D model of a SMARS robot. So it's similar to this, including the, um, the Arduino, the shield, um, the wheels, the motors, the battery, the um, rangefinder, the whole piece. Okay, but there's still a tiny little piece that we need to model in here. So this isn't completely flat, this face here on the, um, the motor holders. Now if I go full screen again for a second, I can show you what I mean there. So in here, there's a tiny, this this section, I'm just going to try and grab it here, has got a tiny little area to it, so you can't quite see because of the light, but there, there's a kind of an overhang. It's quite a simple shape for us to create, but we have to do it on an inner surface, which is interesting. So let's go back to the home view. Now, how's the feed going? Is there any questions for anyone? Is the video nice and stable? I'm getting the occasional warning message from YouTube streaming there that there's um, a bit of a low bit rate going on. I'm not sure what's causing that, but I um, might get in touch with my internet provider and see if there's anything they can do about that. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll just spin that round because the, the surface that we want to create this on is this here. So let's go to create sketch. Yeah, let me know if the audio is nice and clear, if there's any problems there. 
Right, so what I want to do next is yeah, it's a nice simple one, this one. So when we create that sketch there, create sketch, we can use this slice command. So let me just go back to the, oops, fusion, sorry about that. Let's go back to fusion there. And we can click this slice option here. And what that will do is it will slice away the model to the to the surface that we're, we're going to be working on so we can actually see directly what we're working on so what we need to do then is just create um, a simple sort of triangular cutout shape it's going to look like this in, in effect so let's do make that vertical make a line between that point and the midpoint make that horizontal and what we want to do is say the distance between the top line there so d for dimension d for dimension between that point and that point is one millimeter and we just then need to put this in place so this is going that top point there is going to be coincident with that point there i believe just check in the I think it's a little bit, let me just show you what the actual profile looks like. The reason I'm hesitating is I've drawn a flat area and actually it's, it's actually got four sides to it. So we just need to model in that little bit there. But it's essentially one millimeter from the midpoint. And then what we want to do is just, uh, we want to create, I'm just wondering why I used a circle for that. It's probably because I constrained it using a, tangent constraint to the bottom point there which is one millimeter from that point to that point in height and then because of that we can then just angle that back we could just use a 45 degree angle I think I was just using a novel approach there for the uh, for creating that profile okay so let's go back to that and let's just add in that extra bit of detail that we need so let's zoom in there let us add in the extra bit so that's still valid but let's just remove that line we need to model in that there's a tiny little line like that and then it goes there so what we can say as well is that these are perpendicular these are 90 degrees between there and there and that's one millimeter there that's fine and now we can we can do a collinear constraint between that top line and that top line there we can do a collinear between that line and that line there and then I'm um, just looking to see this distance here. So we can just do a regular coincident constraint between that point there and that point there. So it matches that. And that mustn't be perpendicular. So let's just remove that perpendicular constraint. If you find that you can't click on the right area because it seems to be behind the thing you're selecting, if you just click and hold, you'll get this little thing pop up and you can select the thing you're actually after. So I'm, I'm after that perpendicular constraint and then I'm just going to delete that way. So what I want to do there is just make that point um, coincident with this line. Um, because it's locked between that dimension there, it'll make sure that it's horizontal. Okay, that is looking like the finished article. So now we can finish that sketch. We can go back to our view. Let's just spin it around a bit so we can see it. Let's turn on our sketch and let's use the push pull to bring that out. So Q for push pull. Let's just select that. And we want to extend it all the way to that inner surface on the other side. So let's just spin that around. So then we can say the distance is to an object and then we can select that face there and then we're doing a join. Perfect. And it was important that that was a um, 45 degree angle or what I'm going to say or less because then when we're 3D printing this it can be printing these layers tiny bits at a time so that overhang doesn't require any supports. And similarly with this area here I think that that curve is, is sufficient that it can actually build that out um, without requiring any supports. Okay, 
So we're very nearly done now. So just as some finishing touches to this. So I found when I printed these out, um, just looking to see if I had one to hand that had the, the area, the problem on it. So in here, that, that angle, it goes from a 45 to a flat. And then when if you look at it side on, it goes completely down to a completely flat surface. And the problem with that is any stress or strain on here, because this is built up in layers horizontally, this is going to mean that um, it could potentially just crack along the, 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 um, the layer that's been printed. So we don't really want that to happen. The reason it will crack along the line is that well, it's similar to when you get a brick and you, you, you can hit it with something, it will crack down the point where you hit it. Um, if we just add some extra fillets in here, it will give a lot of extra strength, more than you would think. So if we just add the, the fillet to these flat areas, so so that area there for example it only has to be about a millimeter so let's just select that one f for fillet and we'll do it about what have we done it on the model let's have a quick look um, i think it's probably about four or five millimeters that looks about right so if i just go back on there again hold down the option key um command key sorry on a mac it's not that one it's that one there Okay, and that was 4.5. So that's got a much more rounded uh, look to it now. And what that will mean is that it's much stronger. So we want to do the same thing to this area here. So we can go back to our fillet tool and include them. So again, just holding down the command key, selecting that area there, and flipping it round, and selecting that area there as well. So now that's a much stronger join between the two parts. It's much more bonded. There's more area for it to grip. So that'll stop it um, cracking if you, because it's a pressure fit, because it's it's forcing itself into the sides when you push down. That's what's holding it in place. If you ever want to remove it, you're really relying upon this piece being quite quite bonded together to the layers. But that is essentially it. So let's save that out. Okay. And now that we've got the motor holder there, what we can do is create a new sketch that we're going to call assembly. So let's call this Mars Community Edition Assembly Live Stream. And let's just save it back one folder. So just there, that'll do. Okay, so what we're going to do now is open up the data panel and we're going to start bringing in all those different models that we've been creating over the past couple of weeks. So the first one is the, the chassis itself. So I'm just going to find um, the chassis that we created. Um, let me just find a suitable candidate for that. Uh, I think when I did the live stream, I didn't include the chassis. So let me just jump back. Um, let me find one that's the good one. Let's go for that one there. So that's the Smarcy sh chassis. So I'm going to right click on that, insert into current design. It'll complain if you've not saved the file before you insert it because it needs to, I think it actually tells that original file that that's been inserted in something. So it does need to be saved. So I'm going to click OK on that. Now, if we don't like all those dimensions and things like that, we can actually just switch them off in the display settings. So we can go over to um, object visibility and we can just switch off all the work features and we just end up with our our chassis. And I always like it to be in the uh, perspective with ortho faces. So then you get this nice sort of more natural looking object. OK, so now what I'm going to do now is bring in some parts. So in my archive folder, I've got things like the battery, so we can insert that into the design. We can move that about. If we just placed it there and we decide that we don't like where it is, we can just select it, press the M key, and we can use any of these features to sort of move that into place. So what I find is really useful on this, let me just close that data panel. If I create a section analysis through both views, we can use that to make sure the part is in place. So if I go to inspect and section analysis, I click on that front face there and then just cut it through there. We can now see that the battery isn't quite in place. We can use the assemble command as well to, to, to make a rigid join. But in this one, I just want to uh, to move the part. So I'm going to select the part there from the tree, hit M, and then just sort of eyeball it into place. 
so we can see there the batteries it's within those two battery holders so that's fine let's just put it about there it's nicely sat on the bottom so that's okay let's check from the top view to see if that's in place so we're going to hit the top and we're going to just select it press M again and we're just going to move that down a little bit like so there we go that's good so we turn off the section analysis we can now see that the battery is now sat nicely in place let's go there so I just modeled that battery um, just took out my digital calipers and then a 9 volt battery and just measured it up uh, it didn't have to be a hundred percent modeled with all the, the different things it's really just the main characteristics such as the, the you know the roundness of the edges the, the width the height um, and the two terminals on the top as well I did add some color and some uh, appearances to it as well just to make it a bit more realistic but um, I didn't go any further than that so the next one is the, the motors themselves so we hit the data panel so again this is another part that I've just modeled over the past couple of weeks um, I've not done a live stream on this one um, I just did this in my spare time so this is the, the motor so it's going to rotate that around 90 degrees um, it's going to get it roughly in place and then we'll use our section analysis again to make sure um, that it's looking correct so at the moment it's not quite right so I can either use these um, singular axes to do it or I can just drag this middle one to get it in place like so and it's very tight tolerance on the motor you can see there's very little gaps either way around that's kind of how we want it to be okay so that's good we can switch off the section analysis and see that that's poking through it's not quite centered there I think there might have been a an error when we did when I did this model because this isn't the one that we we live stream this is an earlier one that I did you can see there it's got the extra features on um, so I probably need to go back in there and just shift that over by um, half a millimeter it's probably where I did the uh, seven and a half instead of eight or eight and eight instead of seven and a half something to do with that okay so let's go back and add another motor in so we can just right click on that motor there um, press the it's the copy the M and then there is a create copy option if I just move this out of the way you can see there's a create copy button there if we do that we've now got a duplicate in our tree and I can just literally grab that and start moving that about so let's just uh, move that out of the way select it in our tree press M to move it and then let's just rotate that around so I'm just grabbing that axis there I'm checking on the screen there um, that it's 180 degrees just this little you can't quite see that let me just grab that so that there is 180 degrees and then we'll use that section analysis again to make sure it's in place correctly let me just move that back now well thanks for checking the audio uh, Honda 400F that's uh, really helpful to me I noticed on when I was playing back some of the, uh, the the very first ones I didn't have the microphone volume set quite correct so the volume was quite low uh, and as you can see I've got the microphone quite close to my face as well now, so should be much better audio wise okay so let's use the uh, slicer tool the section analysis tool to just eyeball this into place this is the other motor so that's looking about right again we can just grab that move that over okay and then let's just check the top view to make sure that's far enough back so if we want to get it just about right we can just grab that there that'll do so you can see there that the uh, the spindle is sticking through the, the body itself and it should be going nicely through that hole which it is that's good Oop, the battery has however moved what's happened there I think I might have inadvertently moved the uh, the chassis instead let me just undo that undo that again what's happened there so instead of using the move command I think what I'm actually going to do is use the assemble command because at some point this has moved and it's caused a problem I can see that the uh, the chassis is still on the uh, the origin so hey ho that's fine that's not a problem for us so if we just get that motor again 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll just move this out to the side. This is how I go about assembling things. So what I will do, I'll pick um, the part of the uh, the component I'm interested in locking in place. So let's get a view of this. So on this motor, the part that we want to lock in place is just the base of this spindle, that circle that's been selected there. So I'm going to click on Assemble, um, Capture Position, and then this Joint dialog box pops up. So there's a few different ways of joining things together. You can do a rigid join, you can do a revolutionary join, you can do a slider join, cylindrical and so on. What we're interested in for this motor is just making sure that this is sat rigidly inside the chassis. So I'm going to make sure rigid selected. I'm going to click on mode, simple. There's a few, a few other ones where you can say it's between some faces or where it intersects, but this is the simplest one and you get this sort of half moon cookie kind of symbol. We click, click select. I'm going to find that face that I'm interested in, which is, let's zoom in a bit more so we can get more accurately. So it's that one there, I think. And then I'm just going to re revolve around the chassis and then I'm just going to find that edge there. And it should bang that into place. Now, sometimes it does do this where it, it's kind of back to front, so you can just click flip it'll flip it round. However, I don't think I quite got that right. Yeah, because it's kind of intersecting the case there. So that top one, I'll just try that again and get a more accurate selection on that base. So what I actually want is, it nearly selected it then. Let me just zoom in a bit more. So that's it there, perfect. So we go back now and have a look at that. So I just need to flip it again, flip. And that's perfectly locked into place. There we go. We can use our section analysis tool to check that looks legit. It's not intersecting any of the parts of the chassis, so we know that, that that's good. So we can turn that back off again. And what we want to do is just do the same with the other side. We can do the same with the battery. And so the way that we do it with the battery is I'll select this back area, we click on assemble, let's just move that out of the way, we're going to click on this and you can see it's got these different areas that it will let you select to. I'm going to select that bottom one there and then on the case I'm going to select that back wall where we want it to go and I'm going to select that area there and then it will lock that into place. So again, if we check on our section analysis tool, mm, it's not quite what we wanted. And the reason for that is because the battery has got a small chamfer on it. And we were, we were doing it from, how can I describe this? Um, we were doing it from the middle. If, yeah, if you see on that one there, we were doing it from that top edge there rather than from the actual bottom edge there. So what we can do, if we mess up the join, we can just go back and select it again and then just do a better job at selecting the thing we're after. See there, it, it wasn't selecting that face there. What we actually need is, is the sort of bottom edge there. Let's try that. So, I think that's an even worse job than before, isn't it? Let's try that one more time. Well, what we can do, what we did before, um, if I just back out of this, where well, we were unhappy with the uh, the height of it, we can actually specify an offset from a plane. So let's just go back and do that. So on here, we've got these offsets. So we can just specify a Z offset. Let's just try half a millimeter to begin with. That's the wrong plane. There we go. So let's try one millimeter. One millimeter is fine because it was a one millimeter chamfer that would apply to that very bottom edge. So we can just eyeball that, and check that that's legit. That's all good. Okay, so let's let's have a look at the next one that we want to join together. Turn off the section analysis. Let's bring in um, the motor holder that we've just designed. Put one in place there. So we go back over to the data panel. We locate the part that we want to bring in, so build along the motor holder, um, right click, insert into current drawing, 
and what we will do is we'll just rotate that round like so 90 degrees um, and again we're going to lock this in place so what I'll do I'll just move it there so I can see it I'll close the data panel so we've got a bit more working space and this bottom edge here is what we're going to lock into position so um, let's go to joint we want another rigid joint we want to select the part which is just let's have a think how this is going to go because it's at an angle I'm curious to see how that will work let's just try it so that is going to go into that area just there boom look at that perfect okay let's okay that let's have a look on our section analysis and see how that's actually working along So we can just adjust our section analysis so that we're, uh, we just double click on that to edit it. And what I want to do is just move it in a bit more. So if we just do that, there we go. So you can see there, although it's not completely hugging the battery, the battery will maybe because of the sticker on the battery there might be a little bit of tolerance between where that's actually sat in there it might rattle a tiny bit but that is definitely going to keep that in place there uh, and you can see as well it perfectly fits into the, the place we wanted it to um, so that's modeled quite well I do notice there that we didn't apply any uh, appearance to that so what we can do is just go back seeing as we've still got it there press A for appearance um, I think I want that to be a nice yellow matte color so I do that and we literally just drag it onto the part there we, we've got the little star there which means we need to save it it'll become version 4 you'll just see that increment to version 4 in a second you've got version 4 and now if we go back to the, uh, the assembly there's now this little triangle it says there's a component that's out of date references and there's a button up here as well about get latest if I click that it'll go and grab all the latest instances of the things that have changed and it's this uh, motor holder that's just changed and you can now see that the colour has changed to uh, a yellow so it's not quite the same yellow as our case but that's fine we want it to stand out a little bit so let's turn off the section analysis let's zoom back a little bit and let's replicate the motor and um, the motor holder as well so we can just do M we can click the copy we can then move that into place so I'm going to rotate that round I'm going to rotate it round so that I can see it rather than to put it into the correct place so I can see on this one view the both the areas that I want to make the uh, the joint so click on the joint and what I'm going to do is click select on that face that we want to get we can easily get that the matter of it selecting it for us sometimes you have to zoom in quite a bit to get it just right there we go boom and then that one there flip it around and there we go perfect and that's perfectly aligned as well with the uh, the hole okay so that's that one done let's do the motor holder Part two, so we can click M, click create copy, move that out of place. Um, we only need to rotate it a bit so that we can see the parts that we want to join together because it's that bottom edge with that edge in there. So let's click on the assemble, let's click on that edge there, let's click on that inner edge in there which is a bit tricky to get there there we go so I mustn't have selected that quite correctly on there so let's try that again boom done awesome okay cooking with gas so you can see that's coming together now we've got the batteries we've got the motors in there I'll show you as well in a minute we can actually model wires in Fusion 360 using um, a profile and using this um, 
sweep command. So it's really quite cool if you want to actually model the wires coming out the battery and going into the motor shield and things like that, we can do that. Okay, so let's have a look what we're going to do next. So let's bring in some wheels quickly then. So let's go to our, our wheels. So jump back one, I don't think I saved them in the right folder, but I did keep the ones that we modeled. So wheels tutorial, let's bring in our, our slave wheel. So insert into current drawing. Now on this one, what we can actually do is do um, a revolving join so that it will actually rotate for us. And we can use that in an animation, uh, which is quite, quite cool to watch. And you can create, um, you can render out animations that you might have seen ones that have been posted on the Facebook group. Uh, you can do some quite interesting sort of exploded diagrams um, and it's all using these assembles. So let's click on the assemble. Um, let us find the first face on the wheel that we're interested in. I might just move that back a bit so that we can see it a bit easier. So M to move and just push it out there. There we go. Okay, so assemble so the joint, we're going to change that motion to be re, uh, revolute, re, revolute, yep, yeah, revolute. And then we're going to select that face there. I'm going to spin this round. We're going to pick that one there. Let's try that. So does that look correct? No, that does not look correct. Let's just redo that last one there. So try that that looks better yep that's good yep that's good awesome okay so that's that one done let's bring in the master wheel so data panel master wheel insert into design got a bit excited then and double clicked it so let's just close that out uh, right click insert into current design Okay, let's push. Oops, we can rotate it around. It doesn't matter. We're just going to move it into position in a second using the using the join. So there we go. That'll do fine for now. So now what we want to do is do another join. It's remembered that we're on the revolute, so that's fine. We're just going to select that face there, and we're going to select that face there. We're going to flip it so that's. In the correct place there we can get it to do that little animation again if we want to make sure that's working okay now i could make it so that it, the wheel is actually joined to that little axis there but as you can see i've not quite i've not quite got that right i could do that if i really really wanted to but um i can't be bothered right okay so what we can now do is bring in some inner wheels on that side so let's go to inner let's grab that one Insert to current design. Let's just move that so that we can see it. Let's rotate it round a bit so that we can see the back area of it. Okay, and what we want to do now then is just do a, sorry, we want to do a assemble. And we want a fixed one this time because it's fixed to the wheel, even though the wheel itself is revolving. So it's a rigid join. We select the back face there. I didn't quite select that right, the back face, and it's that inner. So if I hold down the control key, I can just make sure that it selects the right bit there. And then it's that there. Again, we just need to flip that round. Okay, now we can see it's not quite got that correct. So, so why is that? Let's have a quick, let's close that data panel for a second because um, we can copy this part a couple of times. Let's just have a look and see which one was the one that was incorrect. It was nearly there, just not quite correct. So let's select that face there, hold down control on that, flip it. So maybe it's that face there that wasn't quite correct. me it just looks like it should be ever so slightly in. So I'm just going to do minus. Interest to see how many out. Is it 0.5? Yeah, that's correct. 
Okay, so that's good. So we can just quickly, and you can see there, there's a, it's got an out of date reference as well on that. So let's just uh, bring the latest one in of that inner wheel. There we go. Let's copy that. So M for move, create copy, move it across a bit. We don't want to put it over it. We want to use the uh, assemble command. So let's just grab it again and just rotate it round just so we can see that back area. Okay, so now we're going to do select the joint, hold down the command key, select that little bit there, select that area there, boom, there we go. Let's just move it back, not 0.5. Okay, and if we go back to the display set, excuse me, go back to the display settings. And we in, we switch on these um, these joints. You can see there's like a little flag there. And what you can do with that, if you if you select that, you can actually see that that joint is working. So the inner wheel is rigidly joined to the master wheel in this case, and we can see here that it's definitely turning round nicely. So that's brilliant. Okay. So we can actually use the. Um, let me just uh, turn that off for a second. Um, what we can actually do is mirror these components. So if I grab all four of them, and we need to have um, a construction plane down the middle of this, we can mi mirror those across. Or we can use a circular pattern because, um, I'm pointing at the screen here, <laughs> because this wheel here is, uh, if I just switch these off so you can actually see what I'm talking about. It's not symmetrical, is it? So that wheel there is a slave wheel, and that one there is a slave wheel, that's a master, and that's a master. So we can use the circular rotation tool um, to do that, rather than just copy them in. So it's really quick to do this. We just need to select two planes, do the mid plane. So we've selected one plane, we just need to do the other one on that side. So we've now got, uh, we just make sure that construction plane is switched on, and that we have object visibility of the planes so let's just switch on all features just so we can see it and we can turn off the sketches because we're not interested in sketches at the moment there we go so you can see this orange is now in the middle we just need to do one more from the back to the front as a mid plane so that plane there oops that plane there and on the front that plane there so now we've got two planes and what we can also do if we need to do an axis which we do need to do for the um, circular pattern is we can do the construct and do an axis through two planes so that plane and that plane and we've now got this nice blue axis here okay so we can actually turn off those two planes and just leave the axis there and now if we go back and just switch on our wheels and our inner wheels select all four of them again do create pattern circular pattern select the axis which is this one we've just created just select two and click ok we can see now that we have the wheels correct and you can see there just you can see through that wheel that that's the slave wheel and you can't see through that one because it's the master wheel so we know we've we've done a good job there okay let's add in the uh, arduino so back to my design thing i have uh, an arduino that i downloaded from grabcad so if i go to uh, my archive folder this is where i store all my bits and pieces let's go for that looks like a nice one there let's insert that into the current design Okay, it um, doesn't matter that it's at a funny angle there. We can rotate it if we really, really want to. Uh, more interested in um, seeing the angle of the thing that we want to lock into place. So we just move this up actually so that we can see what we're working with. It's a really nice model, this. It's got the decals on and everything, and all the parts have been modeled very nicely. So on an Arduino, the, this area here is at the back of the SMARS. So this is the back, that's the front and what we want to do then is align 
this edge here with the slot that's in there it's actually that very edge there that we want to lock into place and we can use a different um, a different assembly join this time we can use the slider one so we can go to there and use the slider and that will enable us to slide the um, SMARS in and out of that track so let's select that edge there let's zoom in so we can see it a bit easier so so it's that edge there boom now it doesn't matter that it's um, all these components are sat on top of that um, PCB board um, but at the moment it's sort of treating it, that PCB board as if it's the only thing that's going to move it will move the thing that we're interested in so don't worry about that so now it's that corner just in there that we want to get if I can just uh, position the camera there we go so it's that that we're interested in it's kind of that there like that and let's let's just see if that can be done a bit better than the angle there there we go perfect now at the moment it's sliding in the wrong direction so we go to motion we can say what axis we actually want it to slide on it is the x-axis uh, we can even specify as well um, the extent of which these things are um, they, they can slide but really that it's locking into place in the correct way you can see now all the components of the, of the slid into place which is fine and because we have that because we have that um, slider there we double click on that we can now slide this in and out now we can create um, a uh, a joint constraint that says you can't slide past zero so that it doesn't slide through the body we can do that if we want to and the way that we do that is through the joints we select the little drop down next to the slider we go on to uh, modify the joint the joint limits and we can specify the minimum and maximum so if we say the minimum is zero and the maximum is say minus I don't know 100 something like that maybe that's too far let's try 20 maybe that's maybe 100 was fine actually okay and then for rest we can specify what it rests at so interestingly it slid out the wheels as well on that that's not quite what I wanted so we go back to the uh, edit the joint limits and for rest we can say that it rests at zero okay there we go so now what we can do is we can double click on that little slider we can't go any further than the zero but we can slide it back so it's quite nice and interactive that okay let's we're nearly done now so if we just slide this back actually we can put in place our um, rangefinder so let's go to the data panel let's find our rangefinder that we designed um, earlier on so I've assembled that already because it was made up of a couple of parts um, so if I go into the rangefinder folder um, the rangefinder was was um, three parts wasn't it there was the the cover there was the holder and then there was the HC it's the SR HC04 I can't remember what the exact number of that is. Um, so what I can do is I can bring in that rangefinder assembly that we've modelled there. So if I do insert current design, wait for that to come in. There it is. Let's just move that out to the side. Let's close our data panel. Let's just rotate this round a little bit so we can see it. So what we're interested in this time is so this inner edge here because we're going to do a slider up and down this time rather than left to right and we can slide that into place you can see this has got the full um, rangefinder part within the assembly so that's quite neat okay so let's do that so click on the assembly joint the motion is still slider which is good we want to select that little part just there we want to select which part is it going to be that part there I think and then we just need to flip it no it's not quite right is it let's just try zero on there 
all right so 90 degrees so it's not quite the right edge there I need to do that inner edge so let me just go back and select that again so, so is it that edge there or is it that edge there I think it's that other edge just there we're interested in oops no not that one it's that one there okay okay let's look at that and see does that look correct I think it still needs to be flipped let's just edit that yep very nearly there it's not quite got the right join uh, edge so it's the inner edge facing there let's just try that one last time okay let's just try that excuse my telephone so it's that edge just inside there Make sure that's correct. Ah, there we go, that's why it's not the edge there. It's the edge there. Okay, that's good. And then motion, again we can just select the axis that we're interested in, which is the X and Y. Perfect, let's cl click OK. We can do the same thing again where we go to the uh, the limit joint limits we can set the minimum and maximum so minimum is zero maximum we can do is is it plus or yes yeah, so it's gonna be a plus number let's do a hundred that's fine and the rest is zero cool and now we can lock this one into place on, on that one there again we can just use that you can see it sort of locks in place that's nicely uh, animated in place there so let us just grab I'm gonna grab this bottom bit here and align it with that edge there so let's try that so assemble rigid joint this time we're gonna select that edge there with that edge there and we just need to flip it and that's not right again is it they are quite difficult to get these just right so what have I done wrong there So let's try selecting on the part itself. So, so we want that edge. It's going to be that edge there, isn't it? What on earth happened there? I've selected completely the wrong component. So it's that edge there to that edge there. If you've ever tried doing these they are quite tricky to do let us try actually that surface there might be an easier one to get so if I grab the if I grab the top edge of that there and grab I'm trying to get to uh, there and grab that edge there Yeah, that's it. And then we just want to push it in a tiny bit as well. So let's OK that. Oops, the whole thing is flipped over. Let's just go back. So the reason them wheels are there is because they're still um, on the origin point, but the whole body has moved and we hadn't rigidly joined. Um, there's a joint that we haven't made. I think when we did the mirror command, it didn't mirror over the joint, so they were just sat there. Um, so we probably just need to, to lock them in place as well. Um, you can see how that's coming along now, though. We've got um, all our joints sort of working. Just need to move these wheels into place. So let's just do that wheel thing. That's quite a quick one to do. So 
Um, so assembly, we're going to do a motion, we're going to do a revolute. We're going to select that face there. We're going to select that back circle just there. We're going to flip it. Looks OK. Similar with that one, let's do another joint. Select that face there. Don't think I quite got that one right centered on. I think it tries to center on that part there, but it's not quite a true circle, so that's why it gets stuck. So we can just do that. There, like that, perfect. And then let's just find that that edge. Yep, that's the one. And flip it. OK. And then we just need to lock those inner wheel parts as well, and then we're done. And we can add in the uh, the motor shield as well. So I'm just trying to decide. Yeah, they're, they're the back faces, which makes it really easy, actually. So let's do a joint. We want to do a fixed joint this time, rigid joint. We want to select that point there. And that point there. OK. And we're going to do another last joint, that point there, and then that point there. Boom. OK. Right, let us get our last component in, which is the shield. And then we can look at some wires then, just to see. I'm just looking at the time there, so we going about an hour 17 at the moment. Um, I never quite know how long to make these videos. Uh, I know it's quite a long thing to watch but um, you want to get the details so the, the long, as long as they have to be I think that's what I would say right so in in my archive folder I do have a motor shield there it's quite a nicely modeled um, uh, official Arduino so it's similar to if I just go back to my full screen a second so it's similar to the official Arduino board which I've got here um, this is on an official Arduino as well Okay, let's go back to Fusion. Let us close our data panel and let us flip this over. I think it's just, yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is actually easier to insert because we just need to grab that very one of the pins there, which is going to be this pin here. We just need to get to the bottom face of that create our first selection there we go so we're going to do a rigid joint joint rigid select that face which is just there and then on our Arduino we spin this round here if we click if we select this face here and then hold down the command key sorry about that you can see there all the pins have actually been um, there we go all the pins have been typed in so just need to rotate that round by is it minus 90 degrees there we go boom that's now in place so we could do another um, slider join on that one if we really wanted to but there we go we've got a we've got a smars modeled in 3d we can turn off all those different uh, uh, object visibility again so that we don't see all those different things. We can go, we can save that first of all. Okay. We can go to uh, animation. If you've not looked in the animation uh, section, this is really quite neat. So again, we can turn off um, all the different f the object visibility if we don't want to see them. And what you do is you just position the thing using either the views um, that we created earlier. So if I just go back over to the design view for a second, you've got these named views that you can create. Or you've got the standard ones like the top view, the front view, the side view, home, and all that kind of stuff. If you if you have a view that you really like, so say you like that particular angle there in that kind of zoom, we just right click on named views, click, uh, create new named view, just click it once and then we call this something like hero shot. Uh, we can then go back to that shot very quickly. 
And that helps us when we're doing things like the rendering, we can select them views. So if I go back to there, back into the rendering, um, we can either do the rendering or we can do the animation. Let's just go back to the animation one actually. This is more fun for doing the, these uh, animated videos. So you can see there, there's a bit of a, a zoom going on. If we just delete that, go back to, well, let's go back to one, uh, zero seconds, position the camera where we want it to start out. So say we want it to start out there. Then we move the timeline along, say two seconds. We can then rotate this round like so. And you can see there that it's now created an animation between those two points. So if we go to that last point, we can then change the view again. We can get one of these wheels. We can switch on the view, the uh, object visibility of the joints. that switch on then joints and what I'm looking for is the uh, the thing that we can use to spin the wheel round okay so yeah what we need to do is open them out so if we select that master wheel there Okay, and we just move that to say four seconds. And what I want to do is rotate that round. I can't find my rotation. Let's just turn on all the, all the pieces. I can't remember how you do that. I think we have to create a motion study. That's what that's actually called. So back in the design view. Um, the motion study uh, enables you to work with uh, like gears and cogs and things like that but also wheels so we go to um, what assemble do motion study we can create um, we click on the part that we're interested in so say that's that master wheel and we let's just move that up a bit there so you can see what's going on. Let's turn on the object visibility of the joints. That's what I was looking for. And what we can do is we can turn that around over time. So what you do is you sort of move that to where you want it to be. And say we want it to turn around 360 degrees on the 99th step. Um, what that will do is oh, that just disappeared to motion study motion study edit that if we just play that 360 on the 99th step there we go we can now play that and it'll it'll rotate it round now to me that looks like it's going backwards so we could just drag um, and make that so it's minus 360 degrees Sorry, minus 360 degrees. We can play that again, and now that looks like it's going forward. You can see the little, um, the little flag going all the way around 360 degrees. We can do 720. We can do whatever we like. If we're not happy with the speed, we can speed that up, like that. And we can do that for all the different things that we want to include in this motion study. So it might be that we also want to have the slave wheel. So if we. Um, Add in the slave wheel as well. So sorry, I'm just gonna select the right one. There we go. And then similarly, we want to edit that to be minus 360 on the 99th move. And then we do play. They both spin round the same now, and so on. So that's what motion study is, and we can use that when we're doing rendering. Um, we can render out an animation based on that mo motion study if we wanted to. Cool. So now we can go back to our render area, and we can select the name view, which was our hero shot. We can 
we can do an in canvas render or we can just click on the render function there we can do a local render we can do a standard one I'll just check that this doesn't kill my computer's live streaming capability while it ge generates it but the final image looks quite impressive when it's finished so I'm just going to keep an eye on the CPU usage there still looks good so you can see there it's now just beginning to uh, ramp up so I usually just check on the uh, CPU usage it's fine here we go I can hear the, uh, the fan revving up in the machine there let's give it a couple of seconds to render that out doesn't take very long for it to do and really this is our our finished SMARS thing so I did say we could look at some uh, wires I'll show you how to do them just after it's finished rendering this so essentially you create a profile such as a circle um, what I have done I've been rendering um, in readiness for not rendering designing in readiness for the quad um, walking robot uh, I've been looking at modeling some servos so if I go to uh, that one there, I can show you what I've been working on. And I can show you how we create uh, the wires as well. Okay, so let's just go to what, what I've been doing here. If I just uh, close out that. So I think that's finished, by the way. We can have a look at the finished article. There we go. I think the material on those um, those t those wheels looks a bit unusual. Looks very uh, translucent, but that you get the idea. We can then download that. We can do what we like with that. So there we go. Let's go back to the uh, the servo that I've been modelling. So I'll do a separate video on this one so that you can see what's going on. Um, let's just make sure we've got our sketches turned on. So what I've been doing. I'll just walk you through very quickly the steps. So I've been creating a, a servo and if I just zoom on a little bit there. So what I've done is this bottom one down here I'm interested in. There we go. I've created some wires. So the way that I've done this on this bottom face here you can just see the sketch that's uh, peeking out the bottom there just find the one which it, which it is it's that one there so that's the uh, wires so if we just turn off the bodies for a second and just have a quick look at this sketch so it's got three circles sorry on the trackpad here it's very difficult to move it about so I've just got three circles I think there are uh, about a millimeter something like that maybe 1.5 just check it actually yeah so it's a, just one millimeter in, uh, in diameter and we, we then create a spline so if we go to the sketch after that one which is that one that one there let's just edit that sketch so we just create a spline, so it's just um, a couple of points. If you've not used the spline tool before, it's just like Bezier curves, are they called? But um, they basically they essentially create a path, and you can you can change these in 3D as well. So if we go to the side, you can see that's a very flat thing. We just hit the M key. We can move these about in 3D space and create some really interesting shapes. Um, and essentially, that's what we're doing to create the path. And then what we then do is use the sweep command to render that profile along that path. So where we've got the, the wires is just a circle um, profile. We've got our, our path there. Now if I finish that sketch there and just find the one which extrudes it along, uh, which one is it? And then switch our bodies back on. I think is it that one there, is it? Oh, it's these it's these three here so what this uh, sweep command does is it takes a profile and it just extrudes that profile along the path and I've said create a new body three new bodies one for each of the colors of the servos 
Um, so we can do the same there if we wanted to in our um, and our assembled robot if we wanted to model in the, the wires that are sort of sticking out the, the robot. So if we wanted to model these wires here we could do that. It might get a bit fiddly trying to do twists and turns and things. You can also do different colours. We just create two sections to it. That's what we could do there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe um, to the channel. Um, please leave a comment, make sure you tick the little bell icon if you want to make sure you get updates whenever I post new videos. And the new videos that I'll be looking at now that we've completed this Mars uh, wheeled version is I'll be looking at the quad. So I'll be modelling out the uh, the servo holders, the legs, the, the arms, the frame. And I think that's really all the, the parts that we need for the quad. Um, essentially it's the same chassis that can be used but without the... Um, the, the stubs, the slave stubs, so there's a different version of the chassis that can be used for that. Uh, but it's very easy now that we've got our model to, to go back in there and change it or to derive a model and take out those, we can very easily do that. So um, yeah, please make sure you, you check out the, the website as well, it's marsfan.com, I'm updating that all the time with um, new guides and tutorials, so we've got a tutorial now and a live stream video for each of the, the different parts, we've got one for the chassis, that was the first one that we did. We've got one for the wheels and how to do the different parts of the wheels and design our own inner sections of the wheels and get really creative with that. We did the uh, range finder holder and we did the tracks as well. So that was quite an interesting one. We'll just close that. Um, the mechanical tracks as well. And finally we've done the, the motor holder. So all those parts together form our amazing SMARS robot. So thank you guys, um, see you next time.